You can order the discs and pads used in the video on the carparts.com website via the link in the description. Turn off your vehicle's ignition. Set the parking brake. Pull the hood release handle and open the hood. Open the brake fluid reservoir. Loosen the stud bolts on the rear wheels. Lift the rear of your vehicle. We strongly suggest watching our video on how to jack your Ford F-150 safely before carrying out this step. Place the vehicle on the jack stands. In order to change the rear brake discs and pads on your vehicle, you will need to take off the wheels to have full access. Don't forget to put the wheels under the vehicle. Insert a flathead screwdriver to the outer extremity of the oblong hole located on the front of the brake caliper. Lift it off using the screwdriver as a lever by pulling it towards you. This will cause the piston to retract slightly so that the caliper can be removed more easily for the next steps. Using a 10 mm wrench, unscrew the stop rubber balancer. Then, using the same tools, unscrew the lower slide pin. You need to check the sliding of the brake caliper slide pins and the condition of the caliper slide pin boots. If they look worn, you are advised to replace them with new ones. Using a large flathead screwdriver, push on the pressure spring, then release the brake caliper from the caliper mount. You can now place the brake caliper on the leaf springs. Remove the pads. Hey, it's Alex from carparts.com. If you enjoyed this video and want to support us, like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, back to work. Press the piston into the caliper. For this step, it is essential to have a brake caliper windback tool, which is a specific tool that allows you to press the piston into the caliper, but also to make it turn on itself to reset the slack adjuster of your handbrake. This step is essential before installing the new pads. As the piston enters the caliper, brake fluid will flow back into the brake fluid reservoir. Depending on the original level of the reservoir, make sure that the liquid does not overflow. Using a flathead screwdriver, remove the anti-rattle clips. It is now necessary to release the parking brake in order to clear the grip of the drum brake shoes on the disc. Sometimes this is not enough to remove the disc. You will have to remove the shutter cover located behind the anchor plate with a flat screwdriver. You can now reach the adjustment mechanism of the brake shoes and retract the brake shoes until the disc is free. Sometimes the disc may get stuck on the hub. If this happens, use a hammer to remove it. Finally, remove the disc. Using a file and a wire brush, clean the caliper mount to remove any excess rust that could prevent the pads from sliding. If you want to know which tools and parts we use in this video, just check the description and you'll find everything you need. Clean the hub with a wire brush. You can order the discs and pads kit used in the video on the carparts.com website via the link in the description. Before installing the new disc, it is vital to clean it using brake cleaner and paper towels to take off the storage paraffin. If your new disc is coated, you can place it directly onto the wheel hub. Get hold of the anti-rattle clip supplied in the kit. Place the new anti-rattle clips on the caliper mount. You can use a hammer to help you. Put the new disc in place. Grab the new pads and lightly coat the ends with copper grease to help them slide more easily. Insert the first pad into the piston. 
then the one with the pressure spring into the caliper. You can purchase the parts we used here by visiting our website at carparts.com. Now, put the caliper back on the caliper mount. Then push it down until the pressure spring locks. Screw the stop rubber balancer back by hand at first, then the lower slide pin. Then screw them back on with a 10 mm wrench. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. Clean both sides of the disc with brake cleaner and a cloth to remove the grease from the new pads. You can now repeat the same process on the other side. Then, you will be able to put the wheels back on your vehicle. In case you adjusted the brake shoes to remove the disc, set the mechanism back until there is a slight friction between the brake shoes and the disc. Put the shutter cover back on. Put the car back on the ground and block the wheels properly. Don't forget to screw the brake fluid cap back on before starting the car. Attention! Before using your vehicle again, start your car and pump the brake pedal a few times to push the brake pads together again. Try to drive smoothly and avoid sudden braking for the first 30 miles or so to avoid glazing the new pads. Operation complete. 